Gamers and gamers, what is going on? My name is Tinak127 and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I just want to talk to you guys about my thoughts and impressions with E3 of 2019. I have a little bit to say in this video, but before we get into today's video, I do want to give a special shout out to 505 Games for um, giving me the opportunity to reach out to them. And uh, they're hooking me up with a review copy of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Here you guys go, check out the trail. Alright, so yeah, that is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. It is, um, it should be out now by the time you guys see this video on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It'll be coming to the Nintendo Switch June 25th, and I believe it's out on PC as well. But, um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a side-scroller action RPG similar to games like Castlevania, Salt and Sanctuary, and stuff like that. Um, I really do enjoy these kind of games. I'm a pretty big Castlevania fan. I also did a lot of Salt and Sanctuary um, gameplay here on the channel back a few years ago when it first released on PlayStation 4 and um, I'm hoping to do the same thing with um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I have a review up for you guys soon for y'all to check out. First impressions, a couple guides for people who play it and um, stay tuned for that stuff. But anyway guys, what's up? Welcome back to another to um to another video and today's video I want to talk to you guys about my thoughts on E3 2019. Um, as you guys know, uh, Sony skipped out whether they're plotting for the PlayStation 5 and next gen or whatever the heck they're doing, but they've been um doing these little state of play kind of things similar to how Nintendo does their directs and stuff like that. So the main stars of the show this E3 were honestly, to my opinion, Microsoft. Nintendo and Square Enix, hands down. Um, first, I'm going to start off by talking about Microsoft's conference and everything. Now, first and foremost, the obvious news, um, us MMO guys, we got some amazing news. Fantasy Star Online 2 is finally coming to the West. Um, that alone did it for me with E3. I was just happy and satisfied off that announcement. I'm a little disappointed that it's still, you know, we still have pretty much a year-long wait. Um, even after all this all this time but you know better better late than never right but however Microsoft's uh, um, E3 was very underwhelming to me now as you guys know I love Xbox I'm, um, a lot of people even see me as an Xbox fanboy even though I love all the consoles the same um, when it comes to their E3 conference the thing that scares me the most is next gen and I don't mean like you know the fact of losing the current gen and stuff like that and you guys know that you know I'm not really a big fan of um of next gen right now I feel like they're kicking these consoles to the curb way too soon especially with some of the games I've been seeing and a new performance peaks they've been hitting especially with the um the upgraded hardware of PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X I feel like they're you know setting these aside way too quickly but um, that's just my personal opinion. But another thing that scared me about Microsoft's conference was the way everything was presented. Everything there was nothing but a cinematic trailer. And that bothers me because um, it just gives more of that mindset that, you know, next gen is just going to be all about 
graphics, 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 graphics. And that's the thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I appreciate nice visuals. I'm a guy who loves eye candy in a game. I wouldn't own a PS4 Pro and Xbox One X if I didn't. But, um... I want, you know, games, gameplay, man. I want to hear about ease of developers. You know, I want more of these um, PC games that we've missed out on forever to come to these consoles. You know, power is a nice thing to have. Sure, you know, make them powerful. You know, we do need power to run some of these high high games. But at the, at the same time, you know, let's hear some things about gameplay. Like, um, if you guys watch my video on Crossfire X, this old game that's, you know, been on PC for forever now. One of the most popular first-person shooters in the world. It comes out for Xbox One next year and they showed nothing but a cinematic trailer of a free-to-play shooter that's been out since the beginning of CSGO or probably even earlier. A game that ran on hardware three generations ago. They showed no gameplay of this. And that, you know, that that just that that kind of stuff puts like a really, really, really um sour sour taste in my mouth, man. And that that just, you know, that 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 kind of bugged me. Bugged me a lot. And um that just, you know, it just really does make me concerned for the next generation because um I don't want, you know, consoles that are nothing but that have games that are just like the Order 1886 on PS4 over and over like that's one game that was literally a graphical showcase and um, you know I don't want games that are just you know graphical showcase you know 4k 8k ray tracing all this crap is fine but you know let's let's see games let's see gameplay let's see some you know some UI footage some um some actual stuff happening like that and that was another thing that bugged me too the Fantasy Star Online 2 trailer they showed no gameplay for a game that's expected to be out in they said spring of 2020 it's summer 2019 and a game that's supposed to be out in less than a year running with full cross play on the microsoft platform and you know with ps4 and switch versions coming later on down the line or whenever they're they're expected to release that kind of stuff you know just really really um really bothers me you know the fact that they shouldn't show gameplay of some of the most simple games they have there you know it, don't get me wrong there was a lot of focus on gears of war 5 they showed plenty of gameplay of that which was um which was cool and they were so busy you know toting you know the the next xbox project scarlet you know the new halo and stuff like that which was again just presented with a cinematic trailer they forgot to even mention that the game was coming on on Xbox One. Like it literally, it literally just kind of makes you know some players feel like you know the console is just going to be abandoned immediately. Especially when you know guys like Phil Spencer have done nothing but tote you know um you know all Xboxes have a home and you know uh, we believe in a somewhere to play for everybody and. You know, little little things like that. You know, I know it sounds like I'm kind of nitpicking here, but, you know, I just really feel like, you know, their whole showcase was just about, you know, next generation and the, the prettiest stuff we can show. There was barely any gameplay shown at that conference, and that that bugs me a lot. That makes me nervous for, um, for, for next gen, and I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, nothing about that conference screamed to me, hey, here's a reason you need to go buy a Project Scarlet next year what so i can you know see cinematics of some you know games i hope are hope are cool because i know what their little movie like trailers seem like like me personally guys um y'all know me i'm a call of duty fanboy i haven't even pre-ordered the next call of duty yet you know why because they haven't showed anything about the game just a bunch of hyped up and negative press either saying you know oh man the game looks gorgeous or you know, this game is super violent and we need to get it changed ASAP. That's that's literally all I've heard. Now, next part of E3 I want to talk about is um Square Enix. Um they put on a marvelous show. I loved what they did. They showed gameplay of pretty much everything. That's what I don't understand. Square Enix 
showed gameplay of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, an overwhelming amount of gameplay that fans wanted to see, and gave a release date. But Microsoft showed nothing, and they were the the lead of the of the E3 show this year. Like that's that was the example we were given, you know, when when everyone talked about Microsoft's E3, and I know I keep harping on this, and I said I was moving on to Square Enix, but they said, you know, they were the stars, you know, they were supposed to show the way that gaming is supposed to go. I didn't see much of gaming. I saw more movies. Like, I felt like, you know, I was in a movie theater watching a press conference, listening to Phil Spencer talk for an hour and a half. That's that's literally, you know, just, just all it felt like. But Square Enix, like I was saying, they did a marvelous job. They, um, I'm really happy, you know, they showcased a lot of gameplay of a lot of their games and stuff like that. And honestly, I'm excited to see what, you know, Square's, Square's offering in the, um, in the future. I'm definitely going to pre-order the, um, the FF7 remake. I can't wait to get my hands on that. It just, it, it sucks how long that project is going to be. I really wish, um, with FF7, they would just take their time, make that one whole complete game. I don't give a, I don't give a damn if that game's eight discs long, whatever, you know, just... Make it give us the the whole the whole chunk, you know, something we can savor for years. If it takes me two years to play that whole game, fine. I don't care. <laughs> you know, just um, just give us the whole thing. I hope this episodic model, like, I hope I'm not waiting, you know, till 2035 for you know part three of the Final Fantasy VII remake to come out. Because as you guys know, and it's a common thing now, we all know Square Enix they take their sweet time with um with their games but overall i think square enix's conference was great they showed a lot of um stuff i know i've only really talked about the final fantasy 7 remake but that's the main thing that stood out to me now finally last but not least i want to talk about nintendo um nintendo in my opinion they had the best conference out of everybody the most surprises the most gameplay and um a lot of people, you know, keep harping on this whole um, Nintendo Switch Pro and Lite rumor. Um, I definitely do believe the the Switch Lite part. Um, a cheaper, more affordable Switch because let's all face it, the 3DS is dying. I don't care what any Nintendo president tells you. They haven't announced a game in it for that thing in God knows how long. And they're just letting it ride along side by side with the Switch as long as they can. But I think, you know, a handheld, cheaper, affordable Switch to replace that is definitely a good idea. That sounds logical. But the thing about Nintendo is they showed gameplay of all of their games, in-game footage. Like, even the new Zelda sequel that's in development that they surprised us with. That was in-game footage on a Nintendo Switch shown in that trailer. Nothing about any of Nintendo's games that they showed, mind you, that all looked marvelous. Nothing about any of those games screamed, oh, you know, we need a higher fidelity console for this to look better. They all looked amazing on the current hardware. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to improve. You know, if they can make their games look even better, go for it. But, you know, with the lineup they showed and the amount of stuff that, you know, they, they, have, they have for Switch. And the thing is, like... A lot of times when Nintendo makes new console iterations, they usually end up replacing that older version. Like when they went from the Wii to the Wii U, the Wii U was a whole nother system. And if they make a Switch Pro, I can event I can see them, you know, making games that exclusively work on that thing. And that would piss off a lot of people who've bought the Switch, which is only two years old. They have to upgrade to a another version already I, I don't know that 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 whole rumor just doesn't make sense to me but if it happens you know it is it is what it is that's gaming now in 2019 for you but nintendo's conference man was amazing astral chain the new zelda um you know just so many so many good games all you know with gameplay showing a lot of indies and you know just like something for for everybody I, i'm not going to say nintendo one e3 but they definitely um you know just had the most to show you know how they always make that little um snap noise whenever a nintendo switch commercial or new game is going to show up i heard that snap noise so many times during their little their little um direct that they showed during e3 man it, it was unreal and honestly i feel like you know they did a wonderful wonderful job this year but overall guys i was satisfied with e3 um we got a bunch of other good announcements too um 
the bless the bless unleash developers they were there they um they verified that you know their beta is coming soon which we've all known but we didn't really get any much new information with bless unleashed it was more so just um stuff we already know you know it's a challenge of making a good console game we've rebuilt this game from the ground up for console it's set in a blessed universe but it's a different game all that's all that same stuff you know we've heard literally since bless unleashed was announced was said again at e3 but we still know you know that there's a release date planned for 2019 according to the bless unleashed community manager it's summer of 2019 and we know that there's a beta around the corner so unfortunately nothing new more of the same but you know at least you know that's um that that's something but take away from you know e3 we did get three good announcements mmo and rpg wise we got fantasy star online 2 coming within the next year we got bless unleashed coming later this year um torchlight 2 was actually announced for consoles i believe that launches um september 2nd or 3rd torchlight 2 is an as um as a multiplayer action rpg and uh honestly guys i'm just excited you know to, to um to see where this holds if you guys watch my video on crossfire x i personally think you know that means uh that game has a is like a standpoint for you know a really good future for the future of um of like uh console games and pc ports and and stuff like that and honestly i'm just really excited you know to see where where gaming's gonna gonna go from here i just i, I hope next gen is a is an improvement over of um of this generation man. like i hope it's that true improvement we need i hope developers are you know more open to the console platform i hope next gen is just not a a, a silly showcase for a console to say hey you know we can keep up with pcs 120 fps and 8k graphics and blah 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 because that, that's just gonna be stupid man i hope i just hope next gen's about more than just that that's that's all i'm saying in this video guys but anyway guys Y'all enjoyed this video, smash that thumbs up button for me, leave your thoughts down in the comments below. And I want to thank you all so much for watching, it's your boy Tenek127, and please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Till next time, peace out, take care.